Howdy folks, welcome back to Nomad Boat Building. Now today on building a 2.4 meter project, we are gonna talk about molds. Now, let's just think about molds as anything that will give, uh, describe the shape of your boat in cross section at any point along its length. So that could be a plywood form or a solid wood form, or it could even be a set of sawn frames. So like in the case of the Bushi Dory, where we basically have an assembled frame that is gonna live permanently in the boat. Now for the 2.4 meter, it's going to be a little bit more elaborate because we need to build a semi-solid form in order to do our cold molding over. In order to do that, we've had to do their mold or plank reductions, but we've also reduced those molds by the thickness of the strapping that's going to be on our, on our form. And we aren't going to get into that, we're just going to talk about the molds themselves. Now, I like to do molds in different ways. If it's just a small boat, <coughs> if it's a small boat, like a canoe or something, uh, just a straight up piece of plywood is pretty much the only way to go that's really convenient. I don't really love using plywood for molds because they're kind of difficult to fare out. We will be doing that for the 2.4 meter, but it's going to be a little bit different than these. We're going to be using something like this. Now this is what I would typically call a traditional mold that I would use in say a lap straight construction. And it's really made up of a few pieces of solid pine that are you know, joined together in any manner that uh, is convenient. Sometimes we have a joint that goes across the knuckle, square across like this, or this one's a little bit more straightforward. And then of course we connect those bits and pieces with gussets. Now our 2.4 meter is just small enough that it falls into the plywood category, but it's got just enough complicated shape that it doesn't make economic sense to try and do those molds in a single piece. So we're gonna do sort of a hybrid. We're going to be using this sort of what I would call a futtock style mold. And when I say futtocks, we usually refer to sections of a frame. And, but we're going to do it out of plywood, and, but we're just going to be doing it in two pieces. So those molds are going to be split into two. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, I'm going to start making my molds. Now I don't generally make molds out of plywood. I prefer to use solid stock. However, this is kind of a small boat and to do it out of solid material means that I've got to make a whole bunch of little tiny pieces and connect them all together with gussets. I'm thinking I'm going to use plywood for this one partially because I've got it on hand and I want to be able to disassemble this mold uh, while the boat's still intact I think. I have a feeling that I'm going to have a tough time getting it out. So I'm just going to do these out of plywood because I think it's going to be simple enough and I'm actually going to do them in two pieces and connect them together with gussets um, primarily because again I want to be able to disassemble it inside the hull if I need to. So I've got, these are my mold reductions, uh, meaning I've already reduced the size of the mold by the thickness of my planking, plus I'm going to be building sort of like a, a solid form mold, because I'm going to cold mold this. So I've reduced it an extra half inch to allow for the strapping I'm going to wrap around this boat. One thing I always do is give myself a double prick right at the shear line, so that it's easy to identify that later on. And what I think I might do actually is nest a couple of these molds inside of each other because I don't need all this expanse of solid material here. I need, you know, three inches or something like that. So it makes sense to just nest one of these other guys inside and make um, better use of the material. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll just take station number nine here, and prick that one off, and then maybe I'll do the same thing in here we say station number 12. And we'll use a bundle batten to mark out these stations after I've pricked it off. Now when you're doing any of your molds, it's always make sure that you've created a baseline on there that you're going to use as the top of your strong pack. Looks like I can squeeze this one out here. got areas that are a little more curved, it's always a good idea to throw some extra pricks in there 
just to make sure that you got them. Okay, you're going to get the shape down accurately. So what I want to do is just. I think I'm just going to leave this connected right here. I'm going to peel it back, do these one at a time, just to make sure I haven't forgotten anything or missed anything. It all looks great when you got the overlay down, and then the moment you peel it away, it's hard to see what the hell you were doing. Don't feel like you have to pop a nail into every single hole prick through. It's enough just to be able to have those identify where you were working and uh, you can almost just eyeball your bat and it's touching the spots. If it isn't, you can adjust it to do so. Don't forget to overspring your tail end a little bit so that you're making sure that your shape and board of that is correct. I've got my mylar overlay for the uh, aft portion of my, my station molds. So one half of it obviously is fully lined out and is used for transferring all those shapes down to my, my material for my station molds. However, I didn't bother mirroring the whole thing. You don't really have to. 
I only need half of it in order to shape those molds. Besides the shapes that I want to transfer to my molds, the only other information I really need is how far apart the legs of these stations are, really. Doubling all of this drawing material over is not really necessary. You can do it if you want, but it's, it's not super important. Especially the method I'm using where I'm using plywood, that these are all, all these shapes end up being in a single piece. Uh, I can get away with this method I'm about to use for assembling these molds. So if I were doing this out of uh, solid stock, in which case I'd probably end up doing these sort of short legs that are connected to like, gussets, then I would probably want the full imagery on both sides so that I can assemble both these sections together because they need gussets put on top of them in order to uh, assemble them. So I need to be able to have both sides fully um, described so that I can line them up properly, put gussets on and connect them all together. Because we're only dealing with a single piece station mold uh, section, so one half on, on each side, I'm only putting gussets here at the top and then using a cross ball to connect the bottom. So the center line provides the information I need to connect them at the top, obviously. And then down here at the top of the strong back, I just need to know how far apart these stations are in, in full width. So I've just got single marks to show me where that is. So as careful as you are at laying out these shapes onto your, your station molds, there's always room for some error, of course. Um, you go from this drawing to pricking some holes through there and then putting some nails in. Every, every time you drive in a nail, it could drift a little bit from one side to the, of the mark to the other just because wood grain will influence those nails. Then, of course, you cut it out on the bandsaw and that influences it a bit. So what I like to do is take these and I will set them up right here on top of my pattern while they're still assembled in one piece, juggle them along here and just see how they relate to my line. I'm trying to split the line here basically and if it looks like I'm overhanging somewhere, I will um, take it and reshape these a little bit. Right now I'm overhanging my center line of hair. What I'll do is I'll just try and find the very best fit for all of this along its length. We really would like to have the bottom here butted up hard. However, at this particular portion of the mold, these guys are going to be overhanging. If they had to rise up a little bit, that's fine, as long as your cross ball takes care of the um, that baseline. But anyhow, I'm trying to split this line down here, and if it means that I overhang my center line a bit, that's fine, because then I'll just trim down this edge of the mold so that when I open it up and, and butt these together, it's it's got the right width to it. I'm pretty good, although I can see there's a few spots where I'm definitely a little strong here. So I'll just use a couple of my drafting weights to help sort of isolate where this sits so I keep it in the same position each time. So if I split my line at the top and at the bottom here and just have a look at the rest, I, you can see I'm kind of overhanging a fair bit. I can't really see my marker line. so. Let's see if I pull it back just a hair. That looks better. That's looking good. So I'm, I'm at the right spot here, but I can see that I'm sort of strong in this sort of stretch right here. And then again in here. So what I'll do is I'll take these to the sander and I'll just try and sand those down a hair. What I'll do is I, I've got my nail holes here. I'll, I'll just try and split the nail holes in half as the, uh, the simple way to sort of get there. And I can see how these nail holes right here are very much split in half and they're on the money. And then these ones are not quite split in half and they're obviously just showing a little bit proud. After I've got those fitted, I'll come over here and I'll have a look at this center line. And as tight as I am to it, I am overhanging by just a hair. So I will doctor up this little center line a little bit, shave it back a hair so that it is gonna fit properly. And even if I overdo it, that's fine because the gusset I'm going to put on here will bridge the gap. So if I have to have a little bit of a gap in here in order to get these to sit properly on my lines, not a big deal. That's much better. Okay, so now we split our molds apart. So 
So I've added a cleat onto the bench here, and of course I've got a center line mark from boats we always want to try and work from a common reference point, and which because we're building symmetrical craft, we want to work from a center line. And the point we want to work on in particular is usually right down at the, the baseline or the top of our strong back at the center point. So we always work out from there. So I'm just using my little drafting ducks here just to keep this from sliding around too much on the mylar because it is slippery. Get the other side in position. Go. And you just want to come over here to our center line, of course, and make sure both pieces are juggled together. As long as you got them nice and flush at the top, that means that they should be quite symmetrical side to side. I'm not worried about whether or not this joint looks right because I'm really I'm only concerned about do these points match? Does this point match? So now I'm just using some wider gusset material and I just kind of eyeball where it goes because it doesn't matter. I'm not using it as a reference to hold anything. And then I'm going to use more brads to tack all this together. Now I have this idea that I might have to tear this apart inside the finished hull, so which is the reason I'm just using brads here. Otherwise I would use screws, I might even use glue, or, or at the very least I'd use staples instead of brads. The brads come apart nice and easily. They're going to hold together just fine throughout the construction process, so they're sort of the, the bare minimum I can get away with. And they're going to be easy to destroy. I can get a pry bar in there and pop them all out. So now we just need a cross ball. I've made up a batch of material already, and um, I made, made a point of jointing these on the table saw first. Make sure I had a really nice straight edge of two sides and then uh, squared them up on the table saw. And it, if I can, I'm running the grain vertically uh, just because it's going to give me a little more stiffness in this direction here. We're just holding these back from the ends a little bit, three eighths or half an inch or something like that. Very careful to align them with my bottom cleat. It would be good if this cleat was even just a bit higher so I could just butt this right up, but it, it doesn't happen to be, so that's okay. And I'm just using some slightly longer brads to tack this in place. Before I go anywhere, I want to square the center line around this cross ball right here. Pencil good and sharp, of course. And I'm just I'm going to go all the way around because you never know. Sometimes you have your vision obscured, and you need to find that center point for some reason. And if it goes all the way around, then uh, it's done. You know, you got it. You don't have to worry about it. So while I flip this over, I always got to be super careful with flipping it because I've only got one brad holding those on each side at the moment. And I'm just popping a screw in here. Felt like that moved a bit, so just gonna double check that it's fine before I call this good. Yeah, that's okay. So that's it, that's done. Do the same with all the rest of them. This particular boat has got an awful lot of shape along its length, and so for that reason we're going to be doing quite a few molds. Uh, there's basically a mold at every 300 millimeters or every 30 centimeters, which roughly works out to one mold every foot. Okay, that's as far as we're taking it for today, folks. Now if you enjoyed that and you'd like to see more, perhaps you can consider joining me on Patreon, and there'll be a link down there in the description. And for those of you already on Patreon, thank you ever so much for your support. And I will see you all later.